Hey guys, welcome to the first video in this series about 2D movement in Godot 4. So in this video, we're just going to be going over some concepts. We're not actually going to be doing any code. We're just going to go over these things to make sure that everybody understands them before we can continue on with the lesson. It might seem repetitive or it might be stuff that you already know, but it is worth watching all the way to the end just in case there's something you're not super familiar with. So let's just jump right in. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the plane. What is the plane in 2D space? And then we're going to talk about scalars. What is a scalar? When do we need to use a scalar? The third thing is going to be vectors. What is a vector? When do we use a vector? What's the magnitude of a vector? And how do we normalize a vector? And why would we want to do that? The fourth thing is going to be velocity. What's velocity and how do we calculate velocity? Once we understand all of these concepts, we can move into actually trying to implement this into Godot with C Sharp. So the rundown is going to be the second video in this series. We're going to be talking about gravity and I'll go over Euler integration and Verlet integration and when it would be appropriate to use one or the other. Uh, the third video will be going over horizontal movement with acceleration and deceleration. And in the fourth video, we're going to show you how to jump. So moving on. The plane. So what is the plane? You can think of a 2D, 2D game as uh, just being projected onto a flat plane. Just like the screen that you're watching this video on. It's flat. It has a width. It has a height but it doesn't have any depth. So a plane in a 2D game is constrained to two axes, the x-axis and the y-axis. The x-axis is the horizontal axis represented by the red line. And the y-axis is the vertical axis, and that's represented here in green. So when we're moving right in Godot, that is positive movement on the x-axis, and we're moving left, that's gonna be negative movement on the x-axis. And when we're moving down on the y-axis, that's going to be positive movement. And if we're moving up, that's going to be negative movement. So this is all really basic. And if you understand this, you're good to go. And we're just going to move on a little further here. So what's a scalar? A scalar sounds like something super complicated. It's really not. A scalar is just a quantity that's only described by a magnitude. It's one-dimensional, and it has no directional component. So if you remember from school, there's a little diagram of a number line down here. Any number that you could find on this number line would be considered a scalar. And it's not just restricted to whole numbers. There are decimal numbers in between all of this that extend into infinity in both directions. So when would you want to use a scalar? So anytime you'd want to modify a quantity by a one-dimensional number, you'd use a scalar for that, such as multiplying a direction by a given speed to calculate velocity, or adding a quantity to increase or decrease its value, uh, such as adding to gravity to the current y-velocity of the character. A little foreshadowing there. Uh, what's a vector? A vector is a quantity that is described by a direction as well as a magnitude. In 2D space, they will always have two dimensions and are of type vector 2. So if you look down here on the little graph, you'll see that I've defined a vector A, and it has an x value because it's the first one there. It's always x, y when you define these. The x value is 3, which means we are over 3 units on the x, and the y value is negative 4, which means we are up four units on the y. And if you imagine a point here coming up to this point, a line that intersects the two, that's where the directionality of the vector comes into play. So when would we use a vector? Any situation where you need a quantity with two dimensions, like coordinates, directions, velocities, anything of that nature, you're going to be using a vector. So the magnitude of a vector, the magnitude of a vector can be thought of as its distance from the origin, and we assume the origin is always zero, zero. 
and magnitude in Godot is referred to as length. I've heard it both ways. I'm more familiar with it being called magnitude, so that's what I call it. But as we get into Godot, you'll see that they call it length in there. So how do we calculate the magnitude? It's pretty simple. We just use the Pythagorean theorem, which if you remember from school, it's just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that gives you the result for c. And calculating the magnitude is the same thing. So we have this a, which refers to our point, with the two little lines next to it. That's just shorthand to declare that we're looking for the magnitude. And if we read this equation, we can see that we're taking the square root of x squared plus y squared. And if we actually plug these values in, you'll see that it evaluates to 5. And if we look at the diagram, it may be a little easier to understand why we do it this way. So this is our origin point, represented by the orange dot here. And this is our vector, represented in blue. And we can see that it makes a triangle. So we are over 3 units on the x, and negative 4 units up on the y. And we're simply looking for the distance between these two points. That's why a squared plus b squared equals c squared works for this. So the square magnitude, it's almost the same. It's a little bit different. The only difference is that we remove the square root part of the equation. And the reason you would want to do that is because calculating a square root is computationally expensive compared to just squaring a number or multiplying numbers, say. If you get yourself in a situation where you're calculating lots and lots of magnitudes, it may affect your performance. But the difference between calculating a single vector's magnitude versus calculating the square magnitude is measured in microseconds. So unless you're doing it a lot, you're not even going to notice a difference. It's negligible. So normalizing a vector is a way of recalculating the x and y coordinates such that the magnitude of the vector is always equal to 1, while it retains the directional component. So to calculate a normalized vector, it's pretty simple again. We just take the x value divided by the magnitude, and that's equal to our normalized x value. And the same is true of y. If we want to get the normalized y value, we just divide the y value by the magnitude of our vector. And the normalized vector is simply those two values in place of the old x and y values. So the normalized vector a is normalized x comma normalized y. Simple. And if we plug in the numbers from our vector, and we know the magnitude is 5 from the last slide, the equation evaluates to 0.6 units on the x and negative 0.8 units on the y. And the length of this vector is 1. So why would we normalize a vector? A vector always has a magnitude component, and therefore it's always figured into any calculations. By normalizing the vector, we set the magnitude to 1. And since 1 times n will always just be n, we remove any extra influence the magnitude would have had on those calculations. Since the direction component is retained, we can use the normalized vector to represent just the direction. So if we take a quick look at the graph here, you'll see this yellow dot. That's our normalized vector. That's a n. And you see how it's moved down this line, but it's still on the line. The length of this, the distance from the origin to this vector, is one unit. But the directionality has remained the same because the point still exists on this line. So velocity. Again, it sounds tough. It's really not super simple. Uh, velocity is just a vector produced by multiplying a speed with a direction. When moving a character, we simply calculate the desired velocity and apply it to the character's rigid body. There's nothing more to it than that. So to calculate velocity, we only need to know how fast we want the character to move and in which direction. 
So velocity, represented by the capital V here, is just equal to direction times speed. Direction refers to our normalized vector in yellow, down here, and speed refers to the new magnitude of that vector. If we don't normalize our direction vector, the magnitude of that vector will be multiplied with our speed and cause unexpected results. And what I mean by that is if you remember from the previous slides, the magnitude of vector A was equal to 5. So let's assume we have a speed value of 3. We know this magnitude is equal to 1, and 1 times 3 is 3. But this magnitude is equal to 5, and 5 times 3 is 15. So if we didn't normalize this, we would be moving five times faster than we expected to be when we actually did the multiplication to calculate the velocity. So gravity. What is gravity? Gravity is just a force that acts on a character to constantly accelerate them downward. To apply gravity, we simply use a positive scalar and add it to the current y velocity of the character before every frame. Uh, before adding the gravity to the player, we will need to make sure that we multiply it by a smoothing factor, which will be equal to the time that has passed since the previous frame of the game was rendered. Uh, if you have experience in development, you'll know that as delta time. So to calculate gravity, there's two ways that you can do it. You can use Euler integration, and Euler integration is the simplest and most performant way to implement gravity, and it's completely acceptable to use it in certain situations. However, it's not as accurate as other implementations. And the calculation for Euler integration is also pretty simple. So our velocity y is just equal to our velocity y plus our gravity times our smoothing factor, our delta time. Really easy, works most of the time, but in certain situations you really don't want to use it. Uh, Verlet integration is nearly as performant as Euler, but with much greater accuracy. Most traditional platformers, like the stuff that you grew up playing, they would have used this implementation. It's a little more complex, but it really doesn't add that much overhead. We're going to need three values to implement this. We're going to need to know the previous velocity, and at the beginning of the calculation, we will just set the previous velocity to whatever the current y velocity is. And then we need to know the new velocity, where should the velocity be on the next frame. And that is simply Euler. Again, we're just going to use that same equation to calculate that number. But here is the critical part. This is where the magic really happens that makes this so much more accurate. We're going to average those two values together by adding them and dividing it by two. So by averaging the sum of the previous and new velocities, we get a far more accurate result with just a little extra overhead. And this is important because when the player jumps, they expect the character to always jump to the same height. Verlet integration creates this kind of behavior, whereas Euler integration does not. So we're going to be using Verlet integration in this lesson. Uh, horizontal movement. How do we move the character horizontally? So to move the character, first we need to gather some sort of axial input from the player to represent a direction. And it could be WASD on the keyboard, a joystick, a D-pad, whatever. It really doesn't matter as long as you can find some way to gather axial input. We're then going to multiply that input direction by the speed at which we want our player to move. And since we only want to move them horizontally, we only care about the x value of this direction. So to calculate horizontal velocity, we simply want to multiply the x value of our input with some sort of speed. So if we look at the equation, again, super simple. The x velocity is equal to the input x times whatever speed it is that we want. Now, this is a pretty naive implementation. It doesn't account for acceleration or deceleration of the character. So to implement that, we will need to smooth it by some value. And we'll discuss that more as we actually implement it in the uh, the video regarding that 1.03. So jumping. 
Jumping is actually super easy once we have everything all set up. And to make the character jump, we again need to gather some sort of input from the player. And this could be input from a keyboard button, joystick button, gamepad button, what have you. Then we register that the player has pressed this button and store that in a variable. So to apply the jump, we simply apply a jump velocity. We just set the Y velocity to whatever we want our jump velocity to be. And it might seem strange that it's so simple. We are, we're just saying velocity Y equals jump velocity. Why, why aren't we doing anything else? Why no smoothing? Well, smoothing will occur automatically as a result of our gravity implementation. Because we have a force that is constantly moving the player downwards smoothly, we don't have to worry about moving him up smoothly. And that's about it. If you understood all of this, that's great. You can just jump into the next video. If it was a little too fast, feel free to go back and review anything that you might have missed. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you on the next one.